Let's go over all the weapons in the Final Fantasy VII Remake and especially talk about the ones that you can easily miss if you do not pay attention. So a like on the video would be super appreciated and let's go. Overall the weapons in this game are very hard to miss. They will be rewards from main story missions or in chests that are on the main path and some are also obtainable in weapon shops and as I said before in other videos you want to keep checking those same shops in later chapters for an upgraded inventory that will sometimes contain new weapons as well. I want to talk about a few weapons though that you can easily miss, but that will be a little later in the video. Let's first start with Barrett and his arsenal. He of course starts with the Gatling gun and his focus shot that deals some nice single shot damage and increases the stagger of a foe a lot as well. So use this attack when you want to see that orange bar increase. The second weapon for Barrett is called the Light Machine Gun that you get at the end of chapter 6. This gives you the lifesaver ability and this is actually the first thing you can do to make Barrett a true tank because with this ability Barrett will namely take damage from other party members. Especially great later on in the game where you can make him even more defensive. My favorite favorite Barrett ability though is the Maximum Fury that lets Barrett shoot an almost endless array of bullets. It actually depends on the amount of ATB charges that Barrett has when the ability is activated. So totally try and use it when he has a two ATB charges for even more damage. So you get this ability from the big Bertha gun in the Weapon Fender in chapter 13. And if you don't check on this guy then you will miss it. So totally do it because it's a very powerful gun. But Barrett does not only have guns he also has more melee focused weapons and the result is pretty good actually at the Mughal shop in chapter 13 so the second time you can visit this fender you can buy the steel pincers and this gives you instead of the overcharge on triangle an overrun ability that lets Barrett a charge into the enemies finishing them off with a ground slam that will sometimes kill enemies instantly the regular attacks are pretty powerful too, so it's pretty fun to use Barrett with melee attacks. The ability of the Steel Pincers is called a Charging Uppercut, where you also rush towards an enemy, launch them into the air, and actually using this ability increases your triangle charges too, so they can use that ability again faster. And of course, overall the thing with weapon abilities is that you want to learn them so you can also use them with other weapons. So just equip the weapon, use the weapon ability a couple of times, then you will see the prompt saying that you learned it, and they can use it with every weapon for that character. In chapter 14 you can get another melee weapon for Barrett called the Wrecking Ball, and you get this one from the Subterranean Menace side mission in that chapter. And for this mission you have to kill a very cool boss so I will let you discover that yourself. You find this mission in the Sector 6 slums in the Evergreen Park and it comes with a smackdown ability where you smash the weapon on the ground dealing AoE damage and nearby enemies can fly from this ability too. But this is actually not the final weapon from Barrett. That is the EKG cannon that you get in chapter 16. No story spoilers of course whatsoever. It's not really a spoiler, but you get it from the guy that is standing here in the library. And you will eventually get here, but I don't think that you have to talk with him for the main story. But totally do it and he will ask for 10,000 gil. I was first like, no, that seems like an unfair deal, but totally give it to him because then you can get this new weapon for Barrett. And speaking of enemies flying, with this ability called Point Blank, you will consume all your ATB charges, do this very close range blast that can also push the enemies away. But that is not all because you also place this sticky bomb that detonates over time and deals even more damage. Now let's talk about Tifa before we go over Eric and of course Cloud, but especially Arid has this secret weapon that is very easily missable. So you start Tifa out with her leather gloves that have the dive kick that can deal some nice damage if you want to nuke one specific target. Then we go to the metal knuckles that you get at the end of chapter 5 from the boss so it's not missable. And this has the overpower ability and if you do it and then use your basic attacks then you are effectively pressuring enemies even more. 
Every character except for Arid has its own focus ability that increases the orange stagger bar of the enemy and with Tifa you unlock it with the Sonic Strikers. And with this focused strike ability you first evade the target and then charge in with a really nice attack. You get these weapons in chapter 7 and it's very hard to miss, so yeah, you will totally see the chest. My favorite and I also think one of the best abilities for Tifa is the Star Shower that starts out with some regular punches, but after that Tifa will be flying through the sky dealing a ton of damage onto the target pressuring the target most of the times as well. The only thing is that you can easily miss it. So if the character moves when you were about to start this ability, then Tifa will miss. You get this one in chapter 10 where you drain the water. So totally crouch under here and then you see the purple chest. And of course a purple chest always contains a weapon. So this one is also still missable, but very easy to find. The cheat trap is actually also great and you get this from the Mithril Claws at the end of chapter 13 so you can't miss this one and it's very smart to use this ability on enemies that don't move a lot or just don't move at all. It's also for example great against enemies with shields because even if they're like facing you with their shield if they stand in this trap they will still take a ton of damage over time and they will go down in no time. So totally a go-to ability for slow or non-moving enemies. In chapter 16 you get the final weapon for Tifa, the purple pain gloves. And this one is also hard to miss. At one point you will be climbing and then you already see the purple chest on the other side. And then it's pretty easy to get there. So of course totally grab it. The ability with this weapon is called True Strike and it delivers a tremendous blow at close range. And just like her regular triangle attacks it increases the stagger damage bonus. So you can move it up from 160% to 190% with one use of this ability, so 30%. So if you still need to do the battle report that asks you to do the 200% stagger, then this is a great way to get there. And if you got two ATB charges ready when, for example, the Fat Chocobo is staggered, they can easily let it go up even more. Now let's talk about Arid and her big secret weapon. Although I will talk about that in a second, let's begin at the beginning. She namely begins, of course, with her guard stick that has the arcane ward and it's pretty cool because if you do this ability and then cast a spell in that ward you will automatically cast it twice so pretty great the silver staff is a weapon that you can buy from the moogle shop in chapter 8 as i told you before in a previous video you can miss this if you do not do any of the side missions in chapter 8 so totally stick around for a little bit is actually one of the early side missions and this weapon has the sorceress storm ability that can deal damage to multiple surrounding enemies if they stand close enough and the next weapon you can get is called the Arcane Scepter. This gives you a fleeting familiar as an ability, so a butterfly by your side that deals damage to an enemy after you use an ability or spell. It's some pretty okay extra damage. And it's a reward from the Dynamite Body side mission in Chapter 9. And you can actually get two new weapons for Arid in Chapter 11. One is pretty easy to get, the Mithril Rod. It's very early in Chapter 11, you walk through this train compartment, then you go out, have to fight some enemies, but instead of climbing up the ladder that you need to go to for the main story, you want to walk into that other train and then just backtrack and backtrack until you reach the chest. This weapon gives you the Ray of Judgment spell that is pretty strong firing this energy burst that can hit multiple enemies and it also, just like the Tifa Triangle and her ability, it increases the stagger bonus of an enemy. So pretty nice. And then we have a special bladed staff that again you can easily miss if you do not scan the boss of chapter 11. You namely need to steal it from this boss with the steel materia that you get from Battle Report 7 where you have to exploit weaknesses of 15 enemy types, so that is not really that hard. I would recommend that you give the steel materia to Tifa because for some reason she has a higher chance to steal things in this game. It might not be true, but I just don't have luck when I use steel with Cloud, weirdly enough. 
while with Tifa it's way easier. And then just spam the steal ability a couple of times until you have successfully stolen the item. It was here in one go but I don't think that will always be the case so just keep trying and you will get it in the end. And this weapon gives you the lustrous shield that keeps enemies away and also stops incoming projectiles and it looks pretty cool too. Good to note is that when you cast it it will appear in front of your ally so where your ally is looking at at the moment. And the final staff that you can get is called the reinforced staff. You really cannot miss this one unless you do not open the chest. It has the ATB ward ability that costs two ATB charges and lets you share ATB with other parties members when they are close to Aerith. But yeah, the moment you cast it, Aerith actually also seems to get ATP. So it's pretty nice and with this you can then just spam abilities with the other characters and get ATB back in the process. Cloud of course starts with his Buster Sword and the Focus Trust ability that increases the stagger and you charge towards the enemy. In chapter 3 you get the Iron Blade as part of the main story and this one has my favorite and most used ability for Cloud, the Triple Slash. It's nice against a group of enemies but also against just one target because they will still simply do 3 very nice and powerful slashes. No, but overall it's of course also great when enemies are not really close to each other so you can easily reach them one by one. I already discussed the nail bat in my previous video that you can get from the kids on patrol side mission in chapter 8. But you can actually buy it later in the sector 5 weapon shop in chapter 14 as well. It plays different from a regular sword so that's already cool and it has the disorder ability. That lets you do a powerful attack and then you instantly switch to the mode that you're not using at that moment. And pretty soon after getting the nail bat you can already get a new weapon for Cloud in the wall market weapon fender. The hard edge. That looks awesome it's like an even bigger buster sword. It has the infinity's end ability that costs the two ATB charges. And you first charge it up and then you will do massive damage when it strikes down on the enemy. And totally do it on a staggered enemy for an even bigger damage increase. And you want to actually visit this same weapon fender in wall market in chapter 14 instead of chapter 9. Because then you find the mithril saber that is overall more focused on magic upgrades. So if you like to use spells with clouds then this is totally a weapon for you. And the ability is pretty good as well. It's a ranged attack that already deals damage when you strike it down on an enemy. But then you also hit maybe other enemies that are behind it. So it's totally smart to time it right so that multiple enemies are hit at once. The final cloud weapon is called Twin Stinger and this is also very hard to miss in chapter 17. You will totally notice the chest so open it and this has the counter stance ability so if you time it right when an enemy is about to do an attack you will counter it with a very powerful slash. And I totally want to go more in depth on the weapon perks and builds for each character and what just overall the best weapon per character is. Right now I just wanted to showcase all the weapons in the game, how you can get them and just their ability. But again, way more content is coming your way. So totally subscribe if you haven't already for everything Final Fantasy VII Remake. Already got a ton of videos on the channel as well. Like this one where I talk about some very nice tips and tricks that every player should know about. And of course like the video to support the channel. Have fun in the game and goodbye.